it's time for your sports faith game of the week. Here's Luke Kroll. He's going to line up a straight on three, and he splashed it. An 8 0 run. Sherwood catch, fire left wing, and he drills the triple. That pulled it back, and now Kroll has it left wing. Reitman steps into a top of the key jumper, and nothing but nylon. With the hip is good motion here. Sherwood just catch, fires, and fills it up from the right corner. And by Quimby, and now here's a pass intercepted. It's Haynes again. He stepped in front of Sherwood. He's going to go right at Sherwood. Oh, and Alex stopped him. Alex Sherwood sure with a big time block, throw ahead, Haley lead feed, layup right hand, spinner's good. Now it's time to send it over to your host and play-by-play -play announcer, Craig Bone. And good evening, everyone, from Torchy Clark Gymnasium on the campus of Xavier High School. It's time for senior night here as we wrap up the regular season on Sports Faith YouTube. Glad you could be along. Craig Bone with you on another version of our North Star Dental Group pregame show. We just saw the JV1 game end as the Xavier Hawks get themselves a 13-point victory, 55-42. And now we move on to senior night. Obviously an emotional evening tonight for players, coaches, and obviously parents as well. The Xavier Hawks 13-0, another Bay Conference Championship. Eight of the last nine belong to the Hawks since coming over to the Bay Conference back in 2015. 21-2 their overall record. And for the Shano Hawks, a little bit of a rebuilding year as they lost a ton of basketball talent from a year ago. Their leading scorer from a year ago, Michael Metcalf Grassman, who's over at UW Oshkosh. 20 points, almost eight rebounds a year ago. Jacob Landon, another double-digit scorer, 11 points, five rebounds. Brandon Reed, almost 11 points. Luke Gunther and Julian Perez, all of those five graduate. And they only bring back one starter, but he is a good one. The 6'3 junior, Logan Sippel. We're gonna hear a lot of him tonight. Season high 37 earlier against Manasha this year. Has four games over 30 points this season. So obviously a key factor tonight for the Shano Hawks. They will be without a couple of players tonight. Will Verkylen, a freshman, out with a wrist injury. And Isaac Wielander, a six-foot senior, he will not be available for the Shano Hawks as well tonight. As both teams out on the floor warming up. Shano to our right. They're going to be in their red jerseys with black trim this evening. And of course the Xavier Hawks will be in their home whites as they're sporting the newly printed Bay Conference Championship t-shirts. As those are being handed out currently to all Xavier Catholic School students. And those t-shirts, courtesy of the Mike Pfefferly Memorial Tournament, the three-on-three -three tournament that they run here in memory, of course, of Mike Pfefferly, who passed on a number of years ago, I think two or three years ago now. Mike unfortunately succumbed to cancer. So that three-on-three -three tournament, a big part of this Xavier basketball program, as it not only buys shirts, but it bought some warm-ups as well for the boys this year as they win their eighth conference championship out of the last nine seasons. And our great sponsor is once again tonight, North Star Dental Group, our pregame show sponsor. Tonight's game also brought to you by Cheryl Quimby Real Estate, Keller Williams Group for the Fox Cities. If you're looking to buy or sell your home, look no further than Cheryl Quimby with Keller Williams Group of the Fox Cities. Call Cheryl today, 920 224 3061, where she is committed to excellence. And by the Ashwaubenon Bowling Alley, the Family Fun Center. By OSMS, Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Specialists. By Card and Coin Corner, Packer City Antiques. Owner operator and Xavier graduate, Mike Waracek. Buys and sells coins, gold and silver sports cards, and Packer memorabilia. 2208 South Ridge Road. Give them a call today, 
and by Fairfield Management, the largest full-service commercial property management company north of Milwaukee, where they offer in-house services including certified HVAC, electrical, plumbing, building maintenance, lawn care, snow removal, pest control, security, janitorial, and project management. And by NAI Fairfield, the commercial brokerage company that specializes in selling and leasing of commercial real estate by PRN, Home Health and Therapy, where they provide home health care and therapy services to patients throughout Wisconsin. They provide quality and compassionate care to all the patients they see, treating them like their own family. Visit prncares.com for more information and by Forefront Dermatology, voted best in the Valley four years in a row. Check them out for all your skin care needs and by Gallagher's Pizza of Green Bay, De Pere, Alloway, and Swamico. And by the driveway, 1220 Flightway Drive in Hobart. And by Jeff's Water Conditioning in Greenville Plumbing. If you don't have any hot water, no problem. They can change out that water heater the same day. It clogged drains, leaky pipes, remodels. They got you covered. Jeff's Water Conditioning in Greenville Plumbing. Best price, best service, best choice. And our local hometown sponsor tonight, the Xavier Booster Club. Proud sponsor of all Xavier High School sports teams and athletes and they wish the Hawks good luck in tonight's ball game. And by Vertical Rays, the new digital platform. Check them out today for your next school or sports fundraiser. Go to verticalrays.com for more information. Let's step aside in our North Star Donut Group pregame show, and when we come back, we're gonna talk with head coach Matt Klarner. We'll do that after this timeout. We're getting set for the finale of the regular season. Senior night here, Xavier Shano on Sports Faith YouTube. Wait, how many times do I have to come back? Personal foul, too many appointments. You should have gone to No Star Dental. Dr. Pete and his team have experience and with today's technology can do more dentistry in just one visit. Hi, I'm Dr. Pete Haley from North Star Dental. And dental implants should last a lifetime. Whether you need a single tooth replacement or a full mouth reconstruction, you can get it all done here under one roof. North Star Dental, changing your life by changing your smile. And our North Star Dental Group pregame show continues. It's senior night from Xavier as we wrap up year number 65 in the long storied history of Xavier boys basketball. And head coach Matt Clarner joins us. And uh, coach, a very workmanlike effort down in West Bend on Tuesday night, I thought. 25-21, very low scoring first half, but then your team just slowly pulled away and Hayden Quimby matched his career high of 20 and it puts you at 21 and two. And now we close out the regular season looking to clean sweep it. It'll be the third time in your coaching career. If you can get it done tonight against Shano. Yeah, I think you're, uh, you're right. That's a great description of the the game down in West Bend. It was, it was just kind of a grinding effort and, and uh, just kind of came out and got some stops and, and, you know, got some baskets here and there and didn't really have a huge, spurred offensively I wouldn't say just was where we were pretty consistent in getting good shots and we missed a few early and a few started to fall for us and we kind of gradually you know got up four got up eight got up 12 you know credit to the guys just the defense and the rebounding I thought were really where we wanted them to be heading into the postseason you know I mentioned 65 years of Xavier basketball some incredible numbers and obviously a lot of talented players throughout the years but this is the 13th conference championship in the last 19 years 10 of the last 11, and then, of course, eight of the last nine since you came into the Bay Conference in 2015. I guess my question, when you took this job, what, 13 years ago, you obviously knew the history of this program, and you've done an unbelievable job in continuing to build that. Was there any pressure maybe when you first came in, took this job over, you knew what you were getting into, the long storied history? A little bit of pressure there or not to say, you know what, we got to keep this thing rolling uh, just thoughts on that? No, not really. I wouldn't say that, that that that's the way I approached it. I mean, I you look at uh, you know the in the two thousands uh, since joining the WIAA, Xavier had not won a regional championship until like two thousand eleven or two thousand twelve. I mean, the, the transition to the WIA was uh, was a rough one, and uh, you know all of a sudden you're not playing against private schools, you're not playing against smaller schools, and all of a sudden you know you're the the little fish, you know, in the big pond. You know, my years as a JV coach. We did win a conference championship 2009, 
We won the regional championship and sectional championship that year as well. So 2009 was a great year. First year Xavier had been to state since joining the WIA back in 1999. Yeah, I think you make a very good point. The whistle layout, obviously a lot different than the way things look now. You have to win a lot more games to get down to the state tournament. Let's move forward. You just mentioned the seniors. You know, tonight's really not about the basketball game. It's probably more about the kids playing in the basketball game. And that's usually, you could say that pretty much every night. But I think for seven particular players tonight, that's what this night's all about. Uh, Your seven great seniors, go ahead and have at it. Talk about these young men and uh, what they've accomplished in their careers at Xavier. Well, you know, these guys came in as freshmen. This was the the COVID year. You know, they came in and, and they're joining our program and we're trying to figure out if we're even going to be able to play basketball games and, and we're wearing masks at practice. And I remember the, the first practice that year, we actually had masks on and we had wireless mics on the coaches and they were they were filtering in to a speaker because, you know, we were worried about them being able to hear us talking through the masks. And about an hour into that practice, all three of our coaches who were mic'd up at the time were barking at the same time about something. And it was just a jarbled mess of nothing coming out of this speaker. And we kind of looked at each other and we're like, okay, it's going to be one of those years, right? And you just got to, you got to roll with the punches. And I feel like that's exactly what this group you know, has kind of epitomized. Like they just kind of come in and they go to work every day. And during that COVID year, they worked hard and got better. Uh, maybe when some other programs weren't working as hard or we're trying to figure out how they were going to do things. Our kids never made any excuses that year. We, we put our masks on, we followed the guidelines and the rules and we battled as hard as we could. And then as sophomores, you know, I think about this senior group, they also, uh, you know, were in a spot where we had a lot of injuries that year and they got shuttled back and forth between the JV and varsity team. And a couple of them, you know, you, you may remember this, Craig, like, you know, Lou Kroll came out and put, gave us some, some key minutes in a huge game for the conference title against West of Pier. Uh, his sophomore year just kind of came out and, and kind of got forced into action and, and, and made some big plays for us. And, and Reed Hippus, uh, a couple of games after that was called up to action because we had two more injuries and he had to guard some of the top players in the Bay Conference for, you know, short stretches, two minutes here, three minutes there, um, while we had guys, you know, getting drinks or or in foul trouble. So, like, these kids have kind of come a long way as, as contributors there as sophomores, and then now to win the conference as juniors and to win the conference again as seniors, um, it's really special. It's just a really tough-minded group. It's a group that doesn't really have a quote-unquote superstar. It's not about the names of the individual guys. It's about kind of just collectively them wanting to come out and 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 compete, represent the school, and and work hard. And and I, I really could not be any prouder of of the work they've done. And you know, you look at some of these other guys. You look at uh, Isaiah Desjardins. You know what a polite and and uh, you know well-mannered young man he is. You look at Michael Kippenhan who has been just one of our great practice players over the course of the last four years and, and, and obviously has earned his spot in the varsity team and, and worked hard every day, even though, you know, the spotlight doesn't get shown upon him. And then you got, you know, Tyler, Sam, Hayden. They've been kids who have scored the ball for us last year as, as juniors and now have all up their scoring and up their play here as seniors uh, and uh, just kids who just continue to work hard, do things right, and, and, and battle every single day. And I, and I think that just their, their, their tough-minded nature, their high character, and their work ethic is what kind of defines them um, and makes them stand out to me. And since these guys came in as freshmen, 45 wins, six losses in the Bay Conference. Now, granted, some of these seniors weren't necessarily playing as freshmen, but that just goes to show you the consistency that these guys have shown and your program has shown over the last four years. Yep. We're, we're definitely, uh, you know, we, we, you're right. It's not necessarily, you know, any one kid or one year and different kids joined the varsity level, maybe at different times. And, and uh, as mentioned, kind of came and went from that, that team as, as sophomores, a little bit of fluctuation, but you know, it, 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 at the end of the day, you, you look at the number of varsity victories that this group has compiled and it is certainly impressive last year as juniors, they put together the second most wins in school history. And here we are, with 21 victories again as as seniors, so uh, just incredible consistency, a ton of accomplishments that when they're when they're done here, they'll look back on very fondly. And um, you know, obviously, our goal right now is to not have them be done and try to continue to push this game and, and this season on for a couple more days or weeks. Well, we're looking forward to a great senior night tonight, and then we'll catch up with you a week from tomorrow night. You'll take on the winner of Two Rivers and New Holstein as we kick off 
postseason basketball here on Sports Faith YouTube. But I want to thank you for your time throughout the season, and we'll definitely talk more next week. Yep, thanks again for all the coverage this year, Craig. I know our fans really appreciate it, our kids really appreciate it. So thanks for all you did. All right, thank you very much. Head coach Matt Clarner of the Xavier Hawks back with tonight's tip. And starting lineups, it is senior night, Sean and Xavier, Hawks versus Hawks, right here on Sports. Who would you rather face? A 240 pound football player running at you full speed or a dentist? Let Dr. Pete and the team at North Star Dental make your experience worry free. Hi, I'm Dr. Pete Haley from North Star Dental Group, and our patient's safety and comfort come first. That's why we offer sedation dentistry. No stress, no worries. Go home with that beautiful smile, usually in just one visit. If you think that's too good to be true, give us a call. North Star Dental, changing your life by changing your smile. And welcome back to our North Star Dental Group pregame show. It's Hawks versus Hawks tonight on a regular season finale on senior night here at Xavier. I want to thank Matt Klarner for joining us in our pregame interview and also a thank you to Mr. Reinebo's Cookies for sponsoring tonight since June of 2014. Check them out this summer at the Farmer's Markets in Appleton or go to Jacob's Meat Market, Jersey Bagel and Deli, Lammers Dairy, The Meat Block or Dwyer's Cheese Hut. And want to thank George's Steakhouse since 1976, owned by the Quimby family. But it's been around since 1939. Check out their award-winning steaks and their other tempting array of seafood, chicken, ribs, and other supper club favorites. And, of course, their Friday fish fry, 920-733-4939 for reservations as both teams... Coming back to the respective benches, and you see the white T-shirts. The Bay Conference Championship T-shirts. Their eighth out of their last nine years, but a festive atmosphere here tonight on senior night. As the parents are gathered out in the hallway, and they will be coming out with their senior ball players tonight. Shano losers 84-46 the last time these two teams met. PA announcer Mike Bates. And Logan Ramchek with our sportsmanship read. to Hobbitch, the senior, on the trombone here this evening.
Very well done on the trombone, Koi Stahovich. And he was on the trombone and everybody else was showing off their singing skills. Very well done by this crowd here this evening on senior night. You always hear a few fans singing it, but I think almost everybody in the house was singing the national anthem right there. As it is time to recognize seven great seniors this evening. And we're gonna hear from Michael Kippenhahn. He's gonna be our post-game guest this evening. But first, the Hawks of Shano are gonna get introduced. It'll be Logan Sippel, their leading scorer at 20 points per ball game. And he'll be joined in the backcourt by Jersey Brocker, a six foot one junior. And it'll be a five six junior, Warner Beyer. And it'll be at another guard position, a 5'9 sophomore, Anderson Schmidt. And rounding out the starting five, it'll be a 6'3 sophomore, Crew Weisnich. Shano coached by Dave Ambrosius in his ninth year, 95 wins, 116 losses. They were 19 and seven a year ago. Currently, Shano eight and 15 overall. They are five and eight in the Bay Conference, tied for fifth place. And here's your seven seniors being recognized here tonight. And it'll be Sam Pfefferly first coming out. Of course, we talked about the Mike Pfefferly three-on-three -three tournament earlier. Of course, Mike passing away from cancer and... Uh, And he is greeted by his grandparents and mother. What a career it's been for Sam Pfefferly. Of course, older brother Charlie, sixth on the all-time scoring list here at Xavier. And here comes Hayden Quimby coming off his career high of 20 points the other night down in West Bend. And he's met by his parents, Brad and Cheryl Quimby. And here comes one of the senior bench players, and it's Isaiah Desjardins. Really a key member of this team coming off the bench this year. Does a little bit of everything, four and a half points. Shooting at 49% from distance. Isaiah Desjardins, a tremendous senior year, a great on-ball defender. And speaking of defense, here comes Reed Hippus. Great senior year for Reed. Almost five rebounds a game. And it's Luke Kroll. 60 career games, a little over five points a game. 69 steals in his three-year varsity career. Sam Pfefferly, 77 career games, by the way, followed by Tyler Brightman, who just comes out here right now. Tyler with 75 career games, almost 10 points a game, along with six rebounds. Going to UW Lacrosse for football. And it'll be Michael Kippenhahn. We're gonna talk with him after the ball game and that, that's gonna be fun. Looking forward to that. We interview a lot of the top scorers a lot of times and a lot of the top players, but it is gonna be a fun time talking to Michael after the game about his role on this basketball team as a bench player and his role during practice and helping with the scout team and all that sort of stuff. As they go to the 
highlight reel on the video screen, 31 conference championships in this storied history. 27 All-State players in this basketball program. 65 years this is for Xavier. Three state championships. And Matt Klarner in his 13th year, 271 wins, 63 losses. The Hawks, number three in the most recent coaches poll. And a week from tomorrow night, the postseason gets underway. We'll have it for you right here on Sports Faith YouTube. It'll be the winner of the 10 7 matchup, Two Rivers and New Holstein. They will pay a visit right here next Friday night. As the Hawks come out in that dark red, black trim, black numerals. And here come the Hawks in their home white, silver numerals on the back, navy blue and silver trim. And Michael Kippenhahn gets his first career start. So it'll be Pfefferly, Brightman, Kral, Quimby, and Michael Kippenhahn. I talked to Coach Klarner earlier today. We've interviewed six seniors on our postgame show. Tonight's going to be number seven, and it'll be Michael Kippenhahn. Looking forward to that. And now the Hawks trying to clean sweep the Bay Conference, looking for their 14th consecutive Bay Conference victory as they'll go on offense first against the Shano man-to-man -man defense. Brightman inside gets double teamed, and the ball gets knocked away and stolen. Jersey Brocker with the pickpocket on Brightman as they collapse three red shirts on Tyler that time. Now Warner Beyer, the diminutive guard, only five foot six. Got to watch Logan Sipple, number two. He can fill it up. Leads the team in scoring and in rebounding. Wisnick out in the corner, guarded by Brightman, and he throws it errantly into the backcourt. And it's picked up by Luke Crow. It's a live ball. Bounce feed. Pfefferly layup is off. No. And it's tipped out. And it's recovered by Jersey Brocker. Great hustle by Luke Crow. And then Sam not able to finish the point blank layup. And we remain scoreless a minute in to a Bay Conference finale on senior night. Anderson Schmidt, another young player, 5'9", sophomore. Here is Logan Sipple, really good offensive player. As here's a drive and a floating left-hander by Warner Beyer. Shano gets off early, 2-0. And now Brightman with a rainbow three, hit the top of the backboard. Kippenhahn goes up and gets fouled. Michael Kippenhahn got himself an offensive rebound and he's gonna draw a foul. Warner Beyer with his first. And Michael Kippenhahn has only shot two free throws on the year. He's one of two. And up and long on the first. We mentioned Logan Sipple. He had 17 the last time these two teams met. The Hawks were led by Hayden Quimby and Isaiah Desjardins. They each had 10 in that blowout 84-46 win at Chano. And Michael Kippenhahn. Into the scorebook. Kippenhahn's eighth game of the year, his first career start. And Shano leads 2-1. Wisnick gonna snap off a three and it's wide right and too hard. And here comes Sam on the push. Beverly finds Crow, wide open, left corner pocket. Three is short and all good. Brightman offensive stick back good. Tyler Brightman using the 6-5 length. Brightman averaging over eight rebounds a game, and the Hawks got their first lead, 3-2. Kippenhahn all over Jersey Brocker. Now Sippo wants to take Crawl into the lane. Luke stays in front, and we're gonna have a travel. Jersey Brocker with the unforced turnover. And that Hawks man-to-man -man defense causes a lot of turnovers. 
Shano gets out rebounded only by three rebounds per game. As Quimby with a drive and a kick, Sam with a little ball fake. Now Hayden, can he feel it again from three? And he does. Hayden Quimby coming off his career high 20. He was eight of 14 from the field the other night at West Bend West. And that stroke is on spot again, it appears. Now Sipple being closed off by Crowell. So far, Luke is locking him down. Brocker, the 6'1 junior, Wisnick, right in the lane, nice little up and under and turn and spin on Brightman. Drew Wisnick makes it a 6-4 game. That was a good power move by the 6'3 sophomore. As Brightman late getting into the front court. Now oh, Kippen Hahn gives it to Krull. Tyler going against Sipple. Hands it to Sam, drive baseline, reverse right-handed layup. Might have been partially blocked by Brocker. And here come the Hawks looking for a tie or a lead. Wisnick. A big body, 6'3", sophomore. And now Beyer flips it in with the left hand. Warner Beyer with a couple of takes. And we're knotted at six. Now Brightman, double teamed, ball almost stolen. And Crowell able to, able to regather along the sideline. Luke wants to go on Wisnick and he can get around him and he blew the layup. Overlaid it as he got around Wisnick pretty easily. And now the Hawks of Shano take it. Sipple into the lane, and they're going to get Brightman. Logan Sipple with a nice crossover move on the angle right, and Brightman's going to pick up foul number one. Both teams now with one foul apiece. And Luke Crawl, last time he saw Crew Weisnick on him, and he said, you know what, I'm going to go to the rim. And that is definitely a mismatch. He's got the quickness on Wisnick and Sipple rims the first free throw off. Sipple, a 74% free throw shooter. And Reed Hippus and Isaiah Desjardins going to make their first appearance. Michael Kippenhahn and Luke Kroll will take a seat. And now Sipple trying to make it a 7-6 Shano lead. And he does his first point of the game. Glad you could join us. If you haven't subscribed to Sports Faith YouTube, please do so. We're going to be live next, a week from tomorrow night, right here. Just Jardin straight on Isaiah, bottoms it out. Isaiah just Jardins, what a shooting year for him. He's 20 of 41 now on the year. And he is all over Warner Beyer as Sipple going to try to go up against that double team, and he does, and he squeezes it off. Not sure how Sipple got that one in the basket, but he did. And we're knotted at nine. Reed Hippus out of a double team. Disjardins again, right corner pocket. Splash! Isaiah Disjardins with back-to-back -back triples. We talked to Isaiah the other night after the game, and a great young man right there. He plays about as hard as anybody. And it's a three-point Xavier lead. Anderson Schmidt. Came to a jump stop, not able to pull the trigger. Ryan Shanty is now in the game, 6'1", senior. They only have two seniors on this roster, so they're young as Shanty. Too deep on the three, preferably throw ahead. Hippus, Reed avoids the defender, and he lays it up and in. He let Ryan Shanty go by, and Reed lays it in, and the Hawks lead by five. Here's Sippel, ball taken away, Isaiah Desjardins to the rim, and he got fouled. And Isaiah Desjardins, I'll tell you what, he's come out here on senior night, and he's going to make it a night to remember. The Energizer Bunny, you could say, a couple of threes, a big steal right there. My goodness. He's going to lay it all out on the line, and he always does, but it'll be a special senior night if he keeps playing like this. As Isaiah knocks down the first fall shot, he's got seven points already. Luke Olhafen into the ball game. Tyler Brightman out. Logan Ramchek, the freshman, in for Sam Pfefferly. Isaiah with a couple of steals the other night. Two for four from the field. One of the more improved basketball players on this team. Eight points already. 
Averages about four and a half, and now Xavier gonna pick up some full court trapping pressure, and it's stolen by Ramchuk. Just Jardins feeds Quimby, left-handed layup is good. And the Hawks hit Shano with some full court trapping pressure. And just like that, a 9-0 run, and it's 18-9 Hawks of Xavier on the OSMS scoreboard. Back with more, you're watching Hawks basketball on Sports Faith YouTube. You're faced with a tough healthcare decision. You've been given a diagnosis and treatment options, but you're still not comfortable with the plan. It may be time to get another opinion. I'm Dr. Jason Klein, orthopedic surgeon and physician owner at OSMS. No matter what you're questioning, a second opinion can give you peace of mind. OSMS is doctor owned and patient focused, and we're here to help you understand your options so you can stay in charge of your health. Learn more at askforosms.com. Back here on Senior Night, Craig Bone with you on Sports Faith YouTube and Isaiah Desjardins. He had 10 points the last time these two teams met in 15 minutes in a blowout win. He has come out on fire tonight. He's got eight plus a steal, and now Xavier really causing some problems with some three-quarter court pressure. They are trapping the basketball, and Parker Beyer going to make his first appearance, the 5'11 junior. And Jersey Brocker back in as Warner Beyer will check out along with Crew Weisnick. As the Hawks have scored nine in a row. We were tied at nine. Logan Sipple turn around in the lane from 10 feet. No good. Ole Hafen with the rebound. Logan Ramchek, the freshman, getting his first look. Quimby coming off that double screen. That one's going to be short. Reed Hippus with an offensive rebound. Now Ramchek. Drive to the lane, skip in the corner, Disjardins again, and he got another! Oh my goodness, Isaiah Disjardins with 11. His third triple of the ball game. He is absolutely unconscious, and now he steals the ball again. Layup number two off of a steal. This time it was Disjardins though with the steal and the layup. 13 big ones for Disjardins early. And it's a 14-0 run, and the Hawks have hit Shano with a big blitz. Sipple finally quiets things down with a 15-foot jumper. He's got five points. Here's Hippus against Sipple. Cross courts it to an open Ole Hafen. Three wide left. Hippus, another offensive rebound. Into the lane. Ole Hafen goes up with a left hand, and they're going to get a blocking foul on Ryan Shanty. Good look that time by Hippus. And if the Hawks are treating this as a tune-up for the postseason, the engine is purring, you could say. Because they're running on all cylinders right now, offensively and especially defensively as Olafen. Knocks a free throw down. Hayden Quimby Reed Hippus gonna check out Luke Kroll. And Tyler Brightman back in for the Xavier Hawks. As the Hawks with that full court pressure defense. And let's see if they pick it up again here, and they will. As Ramchek tips it on the inbounds, gets it to discharge, refeed Ramchek. Three is good. My goodness, the hoop is quite large right now for the Xavier Hawks, and Dischardins with another steal. Shano turning it over at a high pace. Brightman turn with a right hand bank is good. And Shano, let's see if maybe they'll use a timeout as Coach Ambrose is telling his guys, settle it down. Now Shanty having all kinds of problems, throws it up over the top, gets it to Brocker. Now Sipple, three right wing, back heeled it, no. And Disjardins, he seems to be everywhere. Crow, lead feed Brightman, Tyler gathers, double clutch it, no. Got his own, bake it up, oh, and he missed it from two feet. What an effort by Brightman, and he couldn't finish. Everything's been going down except for a couple of chip shots so far for the Hawks. Disjardins absolutely all over Anderson Schmidt. Whatever Isaiah Desjardins had for breakfast today, I would stick with that meal plan because he has been 
absolutely all over this basketball court here on senior night. 30 to 11, this game was nine to nine not very long ago. 21 to two is the run. Now Shanty, a throwaway, trying to get it into Brocker and he missed him. And the Hawks really struggling. Shano with the basketball, turning it over. Sam Pfefferly back into the game. Isaiah Dischardens, boy, he is sucking some wind down here to our right. He has burned a few calories in this one early on. He gave Coach Klarner about as much as he can give off the bench with 13 early points for one of the seven seniors. Here's Brightman, got held by Sippel, it looked like, but Brightman fights through it and he's got six. Hipple was dig, or excuse me, Sipple was digging inside on Brightman, but Tyler able to convert, and here is a bucket inside. Parker Beyer got loose. Sam to crawl, and I think Luke's gonna get called for an offensive foul. He left his feet on the pass, and Warner Beyer Drew the fall, but he's gonna have to come off immediately. It looks like he got popped in the nose, so he's gonna run over and get some trainer help. Ramchek, Olhafen will go out. Quimby, Reed Hippus back in. And Anderson Schmidt back in for Shano for Ryan Shanty. Eli Pasale, a 5'10 junior in the ball game as well. And Sam Pfefferly's gonna get called for a hand check. His first. Only the third team foul early on. We're about 10 minutes, not quite into this one. And the Hawks have come out on senior night and made a statement early. Now Brocker driving on Hippus, finds Sipple. Logan, one power drive, dribble drive, and he banks it up and in. Sipple with seven. Hawks up 17. Shano trying to settle in here a little bit. Quimby mid post, turn with a right shoulder, pump fake, bank it up with a right hand, good. Hayden Quimby for a long distance shooter has a pretty good post game and he showed it right there. He's got seven. Had 20, matched his career high the other night. Here's a ball ripped away from Parker Beyer and Brightman with an underhand scoop pass to Pfefferly lays it in with a left hand. Tyler Brightman led the three on one break and Sam finished. And this thing has gotten away early from Shano, 21 point lead, Brightman with a near steal on Brocker. A little bit of contact, I thought Tyler might get called, but they play on. Jersey Brocker thought about a three on Hippus, now it's Sippel. Sippel with seven early points, the junior. The Shano team has some good young talent, and there's some of it right there. 5'9", Anderson Schmidt buries a three. Good looking stroke that was from distance. And back come the Shano Hawks trying to cut into an 18 point lead. Three out of the corner, rimming no by Schmidt. Crawl lead feed, Quimby tic-tac-toe, lay it up good! That is a fast break of beauty. Crawl to Quimby and a tic-tac-toe to Reed Hippus for the end one. That was pretty basketball right there as Hippus converts and to the line he'll go. Boy, oh boy, that was a beauty right there. Hayden Quimby just touch past it to a cutting Hippus. Parker Beyer checks out for Shano as Reed not able to convert the three-point play. Eli Pasel into the game. Shanty had it taken away by Brightman. Brightman down the alley, throw it up with a right hand. No, Pfefferly finishes it up with a bucket. Tyler Brightman went hard trying to draw contact, but Sam Pfefferly on the good hustle. Offensive stick back, and Pfefferly has four. 
This game went from nine to nine and to a big hurry, 40-18. 31 to nine run is the count. A little teardrop that time, Anderson Schmidt. Good looking shot there. Now Brightman has it in the post. Turn with a left shoulder, jump hook from four, no. Got his own back and he laid it up and in. And Tyler Brightman becoming an absolute handful in this first half. 42-20 on the OSMS scoreboard. It's a full timeout, back with more. You're watching Hawks basketball on SportsFeed YouTube. <laughs> Your healthcare should be about what's best for you. Yet too often, healthcare professionals focus on keeping patients within their system, including who they refer you to. I'm Dr. Will Elburo, orthopedic surgeon and physician owner at OSMS. You should be seen by who you want, and you can be. At OSMS, our focus is on providing you with the highest quality of care in a safe environment. The best part is, you usually don't need a referral for orthopedic care, putting full control in your hands. Learn more at askforosms.com. Back at Xavier High School and the Hawks of Xavier have come out on fire tonight. <clears throat> Excuse me, 42 to 20. This game was 9-9 and then they exploded, Xavier did. It's Anderson Schmidt, he scored the last couple of buckets. Pull up left-handed jumper rimming out on Warner Beyer. If you're just joining us, Isaiah does Jardins with 13 big ones off the bench. Here's Kippenhan who got his first start of the year. Airballed the three, but it's rebounded by Ramchick out the crawl. And he airballs wide right. So a couple of threes don't find anything. But the Hawks in control. Sipple way wide right. For their leading score, he shoots at 39% from distance. Crawl has it off of an old Hafen screen. He'll feed Luke inside out of a double team. Ram check right corner pocket. And that one is long. And suddenly, the last four three pointers between these two teams have not been close. Anderson Schmidt throw it in a corner. It's saved by Shanty. Now Wisnick refeeds Warner Beyer, and the little lefty drills it. Warner Beyer, the 5 6 junior, with seven points. And the Hawks now up 19. Oh, Hippen's got a good look. Rainbow wide right. Luke's been struggling a little bit from distance. He's looking to get that shot back. Down to 350 left in the first half and a right pocket three. Anderson Schmidt, he has eight points, a couple of threes. Shano settling in here a little bit. Xavier gone a little cold. Olhafen's got another good look, and that time he made it. Luke Olhafen got a clean look. He's got five points. Now Bayer gets it into the front corner. Wisnick gonna snap off a high rise three. No, Ramp check with a rebound. To Quimby, Hayden says, I got it. I'm gonna run the point. Through the legs, behind the back. Drive the right alley, ramp check, right corner pocket, no on the triple. Wisnick pulls it down, and here comes Warner Beyer. Five foot six, Shanty's got a good look. Too long, out to Kippenhan. Xavier playing pretty loose right now. Getting their transition game going. Luke, drive it, float it right hand, overshot it. Luke only if and cleans it up. Left-handed stick back, and Olhafen's got seven. And Xavier's not gonna take the pedal off the metal, that is for sure tonight. They got 47 already, averaging 76. Shanty again out of the left corner, no short. Olhafen tips it ahead, Quimby. Now a ramp check. Logan, the freshman, turning on Bayer. 
Now Kippenhans got it. Quimby. He says, let's settle it down. Let's run a set. They run Crawl off of a double screen. Now Olhafen looking for another triple. That one looked good when it left his fingertips. Olhafen back-to-back triples. He's got 10. Matt Klarner wanted a timeout. The officials didn't see him. But it won't matter because they're going to get the ball back anyway. And now Matt Klarner going to take a 30 with a minute 53 remaining in this first half. 50 to 26, Shano trailing by 24. And we want to thank Let Me Be Frank Productions. Go to MeyerTheater.org for show tickets today. And by Kingpin Pizza if you're looking for a frozen pizza fundraiser, school fundraiser, or for your sports team, give Kingpin Pizza a call today at 920-265-1900. And by Gallagher's Pizza of Green Bay to Pier. Alloway and Swamico. Want to thank Mr. Reinebo's Cookies, OSMS, George's Steakhouse, Pfefferly Management, and NAI Pfefferly, and by Cheryl Quimby Real Estate, Keller Williams Group for the Fox Cities. And we'll get to more as we go through the evening here on Senior Night, and it has been all Hawks. And I'm talking Xavier Hawks right now, taking on the Shano Hawks in their red uniforms. Sam with a drive, float at left hand. No good, and then Wisnick has it knocked away by Brightman. Feeds Feffley for the miss. Three and up and under, Logan Ramchek is good. True Wisnick had that rebound and the long reach of Tyler Brightman caused another turnover for Shano. And the Hawks of Xavier have doubled up Shano, 52-26. And another takeaway, Pfefferly two on one. Layup flying to his left with the left hand is Sam Pfefferly. He's got six. And the Hawks putting on a show tonight on their home court on senior night, 54-26. Here's Logan Sippel, their leading scorer. Averages 20, has seven. And here's a driving in a lane by Pasale. He got tripped up, no call, and we go the other way. Sam has it, almost lost it twice. As Pasale is having a hard time getting back down to the other end. I thought the officials might blow it dead. Now Pasale, as he's rubbing his forehead, gets it to Warner Beyer, who misses the free throw. That was an interesting scenario. I'm a little surprised they didn't I thought they were gonna blow it dead when Xavier settled into their half court offense. But Eli Pasale is gonna go get some treatment. He landed on his forehead after he got tripped or lost his footing. Very interesting play there, but Pasale ended up getting the ball and just threw it to Bayer. And unfortunately for the Hawks of Shano, they could not make that layup. And they're going to get a foul here on Parker Beyer, his second, make it his third. 15 foul, we're down to 20 seconds remaining. Sam Lowe on the right, can't finish. And Weisnick rips down the rebound. Shano down 54, 26. We're down to eight seconds remaining, and here's Sipple with six. Spinning on Ramchek, kick out to a wide open shooter with two seconds remaining. That was Anderson Schmidt on the miss. And Brightman with a full court heave and that takes us to the end of a very dominant first half for the Xavier Hawks on senior night. On the OSMS scoreboard, it's Xavier 54, Shano 26. And let's take a timeout. We'll come back and take a look at first half statistics. And we'll talk a little postseason hoops coming up starting on Tuesday with the quarterfinals of the regional. And we'll do all of that after this timeout. You're watching Hawks Basketball on Sports Faith YouTube.
festival of foods and diamonds and gold present let me be frank's silver jubilee season that's 25 years and our first show of the year in 2024 is two and a half belgians that's right join me number two and a half and my other brothers one true five as we work at the frosty tip in dykesville and cruise for illinois babes in fish creek it's the late 60s and herky and mabel well they're the proprietors of the frosty tip join us friday february 2nd through saturday february 24th for tickets go to ticketstaronline.com or go to meyerteeter.org or call 920-494-3401 if you're belgian or not you need to see this show hello the name is frank furter pankratz or as mom and dad call me number two and a half you see Turkey and Mabel, mom and dad, are Catholic and they had nine boys. And we have so many names, they just call us by our number. I'm number two and a half because I have a twin. You see, ten and a half months before me, my twin was born. And then I was born, so they called me two and a half. Well, because of my unusually large size. We, the Pankratz boys, run the frosty tip while mom and dad are working at the mill. And by doing that, we meet, yeah, we meet some Illinois babes. Some fibs, as you call them. And we go cruising for them up in Fish Creek. And let's just say I fall heads over tails for the redhead. Come see the hilarity of two and a half Belgians at the Meyer Theater, February 2nd to February 24th. For tickets, go to MeyerTheater.org or call Ticketstar at 920-494-3401. And don't forget, say hi to Herky and Mabel. Am I done? Step into a world of excitement at a Schwabadon bowling alley. Your home for family fun in Green Bay. Since 1976, our locally owned and operated business has been Green Bay's go-to destination for fun enthusiasts. Brace yourself for a jaw-dropping experience with 60 lanes, including regular bowling and newly updated cosmic bowling. Feel the thrill as our unreal bowling takes excitement to the next level. Create unforgettable memories with your family at Ashwaubenon Bowling Alley. Hungry? Check out this deal on the best pizza in Wisconsin. I love this pizza. And you'll love getting $5 off any Gallagher's pizza order of 30 or more. Call us for delivery. It's the best way to feed your office for lunch. Elevate your program's fundraising this season with Vertical Raise. Vertical Raise is the premier online fundraising platform for organizations of all sizes using innovative technology to create the easiest and most efficient system available. Raise more money in less time with a local fundraising coach who works with you every step of the way to customize the ideal fundraiser for your program. To find out more, visit verticalraise.com. When hunger strikes, you need to act fast or you could die. So keep a healthy supply of Kingpin pizzas in your freezer and you'll always be just 12 minutes away from deliciousness. Kingpin Pizza, it's good. Your health care should be about what's best for you. Yet too often, healthcare professionals focus on keeping patients within their system, including who they refer you to. I'm Dr. Will Elbiro, orthopedic surgeon and physician owner at OSMS. You should be seen by who you want, and you can be. At OSMS, our focus is on providing you with the highest quality of care in a safe environment. The best part is, you usually don't need a referral for orthopedic care, putting full control in your hands. Learn more at askforosms.com. And we're back in Torchy Clark Gym. Craig Bone with you on Sports Faith YouTube. And that was one of the best first halves of the season for the Xavier Hawks as they got after the Shawano Hawks here in this first half. 54-26 is the count on the OSMS scoreboard. And it was complete domination from about the time it was 9-9. They went on a 13-0 run, I believe it was, before Shano got a bucket. And they just continued to stretch it out. And the story of this game early on, Isaiah Desjardins, one of seven seniors playing tonight. He comes off the bench, and he leads the Hawks with 13 points. And you throw in three steals and an assist and a rebound. He was 5-for-5 five five from the field, 3-for-3. Three three from beyond the arc and two for two. Had a couple of free throws as well, but very impressive first half to say the least. And Luke Olhafen finishes this first half with 10 points on some solid shooting, three of five from the field. 
Knocked down a couple of triples, two for four he was. And Tyler Brightman in 11 minutes finished with eight points. Six rebounds and a couple of steals in that first half. He was four for nine from the field. And Sam Feffley, another great senior, playing his last regular season game here at Torchy Clark Gym. Six points, four helpers in that first half. Three rebounds as well, three for seven shooting. And Logan Ramchak with five points in his seven minutes. And Logan, two of four from the field. And Hayden Quimby coming off his career high of 20. He scored five points as well in 14 minutes of time. He was two for three from the field, including one from distance. And Reed Hippus, a very solid eight minutes out of Reed. Four points on two for two shooting. Had a couple of offensive rebounds as well. And Michael Kippenhan, his first career start. The senior with a lone free throw in that first half had a couple of rebounds as well. And rounding out the scoring, actually no scoring from Luke Kroll. No points out of Luke, but always doing other things. Got himself a defensive rebound. He was 0 for 4 from the field in his 11 minutes. So that does it for the Hawks scoring in the first half. Xavier. 54, and they averaged 76. The Hawks were five of six from the charity stripe in that first half. And from distance, they were seven of 16 from three-point range, and they out-rebounded Shano 22 to 12 in that first half. Hawks, 21 of 40 from the field in that first half. And everything that was being thrown up was pretty much going in as the Hawks come away with a 22 to 12 rebound advantage and for the Shano Hawks they were paced by Anderson Schmidt the 5'9 sophomore finished with 8 and their leading scorer Logan Sippo finished with 7 along with Warner Beyer another underclassman the 5'6 junior and Parker Beyer and Crew Weisnick they each finish with two points as the Hawks, 11 of 23, Shauna was from the field, only three of 12 from distance. But the big number is the turnover differential as Shano turned it over 12 times in that first half. Xavier only three, so 12 turnovers, a major, major struggle in this first half as Xavier really picked up tempo by going to a full court trapping defense. And that turned out to be a huge difference in this first half and a big reason why we're sitting here at 54 to 26. As you see the Hawks to our right, taking their second half warmups. And we did talk about postseason play coming up. The Shano Hawks did get themselves an eight seed. So they will host a Lacrosse Logan on Tuesday evening. That game at Shano, and the winner of that game will get the number one seed. And it's not an easy one as it's West Salem, as they have been to state the last couple of years. A very solid program. So the winner goes to West Salem and New London. A five seed out of the bay. They will play at on Alaska. Seymour will get themselves a home matchup in the 6-11 game. They'll take on Toma. And then taking a peek, obviously, at Division Three, the one that we look at as close as ever because of the Xavier Hawks. And they'll get the winner of Two Rivers, New Holstein. That's a Tuesday night game, and then we'll be here a week from tomorrow night for that first round of the regional. And then right above it, it's Wrightstown Campbell Sport, the 6-11 matchup. The winner of that game takes on the defending state champs in Division Three. That'll be the Brilliant Lions. And the number one seed in that Chilton sectional in the Brilliant region. Keel will take on the winner of the 8-9 matchup, Denmark and Chilton. 
So that kind of lays it out here over the next week or so as we get into the most exciting time of the year. If you're a basketball fan, it is that time of year, no doubt about it. And we're going to follow the Hawks as far as they can go. And that ball was knocked out by Tyler Brightman as the Hawks of Shano will start on offense first. 12 turnovers, a huge number for Shano in that first half. Here's Anderson Schmidt. He led the Shano Hawks in scoring in the first half, had eight. Now Luke Kroll gonna try his luck short on the three. Brightman somehow got an offensive rebound, goes up against Sippel and he banked it up and in. Tyler Brightman with a big offensive rebound. He went right at Logan Sippel and he's got 10. And the Hawks trying to make a senior night memorable and so far so good. Up 30. Anderson Schmidt to Weisnick. Thought about shooting that three, but Brightman right there. Now Weismick tries to drive baseline right out of a double team. Finds Schmidt. Now the three ball by Brocker rolls off. No, and here comes Sam and the Hawks. Xavier has their transition game going. Sam straight on and straight in. Straight on triple for Sam Pfefferly. 27%. He doesn't shoot a lot of them, but that one looked really nice. Hawks by 33. Now Schmidt only five foot nine, I have him listed at. And then Warner Beyer, he's five six. Jersey Brocker with a beautiful take down the right alley and he flipped it in off the window. His first two of the ball game. He averages about three and a half. Caden Quimby, give it the crawl. Luke, snap it down the baseline and it got intercepted by Warner Beyer. I think he was looking for Kippenhahn or Pfefferly, I'm not sure. Sippel, float it mid post. Wisnick flips it in from four feet. Crew Wisnick has four. Lead feed, Brightman got behind everybody. He's got 12 as Pfefferly found him after a make. Xavier will run after makes, as they showed you right there as Brightman running the floor. Sippel almost traveled. Now Anderson Schmidt into the mid post area. Walled off by Pfefferly and now an errant pass by Schmidt out of bounds trying to get it to Weisnick. 13 turnovers now in the game for Shano. Not quite three minutes elapsed here in the second half. On senior night, whiteout night, as you see the student section in the white t-shirts. The newly printed Bay Conference t-shirts. Sam has it, alley of whoa, Brightman, no! Got his own reverse layup, no, and the put back good. That was a beautiful set backdoor lob and Tyler caught it and just couldn't finish. But ultimately he gets his 14th point as he kept crashing the offensive glass. And the lead back to 33. Schmidt left wing three is short. Brightman with another rebound, he wants to run. Tyler behind the back dribble, down the alley. Finds Quimby, pump fake. Hayden hit the bottom of the backboard but he got hit. Tyler Brightman running the fast break. And then a beautiful pass down low as Crew Weisnick picks up his first. And Quimby to the line for two. That was a tough pass by Brightman, but he found Quimby. Ryan Shanty gonna come back as will Parker Beyer for Shano. Brocker and Warner Beyer will go out for Coach Dave Ambrosius. And Quimby knocks down a pair. He has nine. 57% only from the stripe. Hawks gonna need to make their free throws at some point. 
because the games are going to get a little bit tighter. As Weisnick able to drive her on Brightman, but he wasn't able to finish. And now Pfefferly has it. He goes right around Schmidt. No! Kippenhahn, who's checked in for the Hawks. Tried to gather that offensive rebound, but couldn't. Now Schmidt hung up in the middle of the lane. Logan Sippel tied up by Quimby, but no. Hayden Quimby with the foul on the reach in. As Logan Sippel got attacked by three white shirts that time. Little jab step there by Sippel. Guarded by Luke Kroll. Ryan Shanty. One of only a couple of seniors on this Shano roster. Isaac Wielander not available this evening. That would have been the other senior. That would have come off the bench. Now Schmidt. Throws it right side to Parker Beyer. Right now, Xavier just bottling up everything Shauna wants to do. 65-30. All Xavier tonight. Schmidt. Right of the lane has to give it outside. Parker Beyer. And right now, Shauna just struggling to get a shot off. Michael Kippenhahn playing some solid man-to-man -man defense. Now Sipple going to try to use a ball screen. Has it against Crawl out of a double team. Finds Bayer now outside Schmidt, and good patience that time. Anderson Schmidt has 11. He has played very good, averaging only four a game. Coming off a nine-point game against Anigo on three of seven three-point shooting. Same play, backdoor lob, and this time it works. Same exact lob back door and Pfefferly dropped a dime on Brightman and he caught it and he laid it in. Tyler with 16. As it'll be Reed Hippus and Isaiah Disjardin's next dead ball. What a beautiful set play. As we haven't seen that one a whole lot this year but they executed it to perfection right there as Ramchek and Olhafen Going to come in here, wholesale substitution. Schmidt wide left on the three. Brightman throw it ahead to Pfefferly. Sam in some traffic. No look, bounce feed, layup good. Luke Kroll. What a feed by Pfefferly. He found a cutting crawl and Luke laid it in for his first bucket. That was a pretty play right there by Pfefferly. And now Kroll is going to get a hand check on Sippel. And a four for four substitution here. Crawl, Brightman, Quimby, and Pfefferly is going to come off. Michael Kippenhahn is going to stay on. Anderson Schmidt checks out for Shano. As Ryan Shanty comes back in for the team in red. 69-33 as Xavier as... Turned it up a notch. Getting ready for the postseason and they're doing it in fine style. Warner Beyer with a good spin move out of Disjardin's defense. Now Shanty finds the left-handed Beyer and he drilled it. Warner Beyer with his second triple. He's got 10. These young guards for Shano have played well tonight and shot it well. Reed Hippus, can he answer? And he splashes a triple. Hippus with seven. 31% three-point shooter. Got nothing but net on that one. Ryan Shanty now. Warner Beyer, five foot six. Junior. Good looking ball handler. Disjardins all over him, knocks it away. Isaiah with a huge 13 point first half. Sippel pull up in the lane and he got it over Olhafen. Logan Sippel with nine. A tough shot in the lane over a couple of white shirts. Bounce feed in the post, just Jardins. Cross courts it and it's intercepted and stolen. Here comes a two on one. Brooker flip it to Sippel. He probably should have took it on his own. Just Jardins, who's it off of? They're going to say last touched by Brocker. What a hustle play by Isaiah Disjardins. 
as Brocker maybe a little too unselfish on that one. He probably could have got to the rim himself. He tried to get it over to his buddy Logan Sipple. Now Shauna going to trap the ball. No look. Both feet to Jardins. Lay it up. Oh, hey, for no, but a foul. What a beautiful no look bounce feed to his right by Jardins. Ryan Shanty gets called for it. Isaiah Desjardins has been doing it all tonight. Ole now will shoot a pair. He's got 10. And Cole Hippus going to make his first appearance of the evening. 6'2 junior. He'll come in for Michael Kippenhan. Crew Weisnick and Anderson Schmidt will come back for Shano. Logan Sippel and Parker Beyer out. Jersey Brocker out of the ball game as well. Olhafen knocks a pair down. He has a dozen. Had a career high 19 earlier this year against Seymour. Five points, nine rebounds down at West Bend West the other night. As Xavier total control of this one, 74-38. And here's a ball tipped by Reed Hippus, stolen by Olafen, layup, no! Reed Hippus cleans it up. Luke Olafen missed the bunny left-hander, but Reed Hippus there to clean it up. He's got nine. Has yet another turnover by Shano. Schmidt having trouble with it, but Warner Beyer long on the three, chases it down, deflects it to Wisnick, and he's stripped by Cole Hippus. But Crew Wisnick, the big fella, powers it up on the window. He stuck with it, and he's got six. Wisnick only a sophomore. Backdoor cutting, Disjardins, and a beautiful look by Olhafen. Disjardins with 15. Luke Olhafen, the big fella with a good pass right there out of the 6'2 junior. Now Wisnick. Powers it against Olhafen, but instead flips it to Bayer. No on the left-handed three, it's too hard. Now Isaiah gonna throw it ahead to Ramchek. Logan Ramchek, the freshman, five in the first half. Cole Hippus, flipping the corner to his cousin Reed. Short on the three, discharges it off its rebound. Reed, rumbling down the lane, was it a block? And it is, and that's a good call. Anderson Schmidt didn't quite get there in time, so Reed, Earns a two-shot foul. Cole Hippus, by the way, a career-high 20 against Wittenberg Burnhamwood. Just a few games back. And now Hippus to the free throw line. And one thing I've seen tonight is the free throw shooting of Xavier has looked very, very good. They're 10 of 11. They've only missed one free throw in this game and that's a huge statistic as Reed knocks on a pair. 11 of 12 for Xavier from the stripe as Logan Sipple comes back in for Shano. And number 10, Ethan Onesti in for Shano as well and the air ball out of the corner was by Onesti. And Luke Olafen three just short on the front rim and Sipple rips down the rebound. Hawks, we're at a running clock score, 40 or more, it's gonna continue to run even during dead balls. Wisnick, long three and he got it. Crew Wisnick, a good looking stroke, he's got nine. Big sophomore, 19 this year, earlier against Menasha. Reed Hippus to the rim, he can't finish. Had a 12 point ball game the other night against Anigo, Wisnick did. 12 points, five rebounds on six of 11 shooting. As we're down to seven and a half minutes. Logan Simple spinning on Disjardins. They'll send two white shirts at Simple. Oh, Disjardins left his feet, Euro step Simple, and before they can shoot it, they're gonna get Olhafen, I believe, on a push. Thirty-eight 
Third team foul. As the clock continues to run, it hit 40. And Reed Flick gonna make an appearance for the Hawks. Michael Potter in here as well as Jonah Gentry. Pull up Sipple, 12 footers good, shooters roll, he's got 11. Jonah's brother, of course, Jude on the camera tonight. Michael Potter says, I'm gonna let fly a three and it's long. It's Matthew Potter, I'm sorry about that. Not Michael, it's Matthew Potter. As Jonah Gentry picks up a foul on the rebound attempt. And this is where Coach Klarner, as a coach, you don't pay any attention to the score. It's all about seeing your second team guys and third team guys really play good basketball and don't be sloppy. Reed Flick with a flick of the right wrist. Oh, in and out, it was halfway down on the three. Ole Hafer with the offensive rebound. Tough feed inside. Flick somehow got it and got fouled. Wow, that was a really difficult pass by Luke Olhafen, but he got it to Flick. And Reed stuck with it. Eli Passale with the foul. Michael Kippenhahn back on for the Hawks. Parker Beyer in for Shano. Crew Weisnick will check out as we have a continuous running clock, 80-45, Kip and Han, get down, and it did! The student section erupts. Kip and Han with a triple, he's got four points, his second three-point hit of the year, and a high-arcing three is matched by Eli Passell. And the student section chanting, Michael, 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 can he do it again? Just short on the rim, flick. Offensive put back, no. Loose ball, flick. Throws it up and now one heartbreak off the rim. Oh my goodness. We've seen a number of those tonight. The Hawks do have 83 on the board, so you kind of think they shot well and they have, but they probably missed, oh, I don't know, a half a dozen within three feet of the basket. So they could be in the 90s very, very easily. Parker Beyer. Hand it to Sipple. Logan Sipple with a big jump stop, banking in with a left hand and a foul. Logan Sipple with a big jump stop, counted and a foul. It'll be Cole Hippus. A fairly quiet night for Sipple. He does have 13 now. But this game got away early and it was a lot to do with the Xavier defense and a lot of turnovers, a lot of transition buckets. And it was really Isaiah Disjardins just energizing this team early. 13 first half points. More substitutions coming. We're gonna see Eli Mares here in a little bit. As the feed inside to Kippen Hahn. Oh, and he can't make it on the third attempt, he does! Michael Kippen Hahn. It took three tries, but the third time was the charm. He just kept on a battle, and we're gonna talk to Michael after the ball game. Looking forward to that conversation. Eli Mares is into the ball game. Kyler Bleck, a 5'11 sophomore in for Xavier as well. And Kippenhahn looking for his seventh point of the game, and he got it. A career-high seven in his first career start. He's all smiles right now. One of seven seniors as Black intercepts that pass. And he's going to wind up a three too hard. No. And the rebound comes off to Shano. I don't have a 14 in my roster. So I'm scanning my JV roster, and I don't see a 14 there either. So my apologies for the 14 in Shano Red. Six. 
Cooper Busher has just checked in for Shano as we have the continuous clock inside of two minutes remaining. 86-51, here's a ball knocked away, it's a three on oh. Cole Hippis up the elevator shaft and he blew the layup. He tried to partially dunk it, now he's gonna step back. Three point bomb from the right corner and he drains it. He doesn't finish the layup, but he likes the right corner pocket and he dropped the hammer from downtown. He's nine of 15 now from three on the year. Potter, the refeed to Hippus, and he lays it up and in. Cole Hippus running the fast break. Him and Matthew Potter. And it's a 40-point lead once again, the largest of the ball game. 91-51. Jacob Rogers. The big six foot eight senior in there for Shano and Cole Hippus and Michael Kippenon are gonna come off. As Eli Mares into the ball game, as is Jonah Gentry. As the bench getting a few minutes, Jacob Rogers will go to the free throw line, a six eight senior. He's one of eight on the year from the stripe, but he got the high arcer to go. So the Hawks get a little rest about seven days and they'll be back right here against New Holstein or Two Rivers. And we'll have it for you a week from Friday with a 7 p.m. tip. As Reed Flick gonna try to get in the scorebook. No, Jonah Gentry offensive rebound. Three out of the corner by Black, no good, and Eli Mares with an offensive rebound, and he gets knocked to the floor. Aiden Bistol, who's into the ball game, gets the foul, and the clock is gonna run out here as Eli Mares shoots a couple of foul shots. Mares will get a second, the clock stopped with point two, so the horn went blow right when he's shooting. And Eli not able to get it to go, but we come to the end of a regular season, the 65th year of basketball here at Xavier, and the Hawks come away with a resounding 91-52 final score on the OSMS scoreboard. And we will come back with our post game as the Hawks move to 14-0 in the Bay Conference. They finished the regular season 22-2. and Again, your final on the OSMS scoreboard, Xavier 91, Shano 52. Back with more after this. You're watching Hawks basketball on Sports Faith YouTube. Who would you rather face, a 240-pound football player running at you full speed or a dentist? Let Dr. Pete and the team at North Star Dental make your experience worry-free. Hi, I'm Dr. Pete Haley from North Star Dental Group, and our patient's safety and comfort come first. That's why we offer sedation dentistry. No stress, no worries. Go home with that beautiful smile, usually in just one visit. If you think that's too good to be true, give us a call. North Star Dental, changing your life by changing your smile. Head back in time to the Bricks, the Ashwaubenon Bowling Alley's very own hidden gem. Ideal for private parties, it can accommodate up to 50 guests. Perfect for rehearsal dinners, small parties, and bridal parties. It offers an intimate atmosphere for every occasion. Enjoy a mouth-watering selection from our wide array of delicious banquet offerings. Host your next event in the Bricks at the Ashwaubenon Bowling Alley. Hungry? Check out this deal on the best pizza in Wisconsin. I love this pizza. And you'll love getting $5 off any Gallagher's pizza order of 30 or more. And it's all you can eat at our lunch buffets at any of our four locations.
Festival of Foods and Diamonds and Gold present Let Me Be Frank's Silver Jubilee Season. That's 25 years. And our first show of the year in 2024 is Two and a Half Belgians. That's right. Join me, number two and a half, and my other brothers, one true five, as we work at the Frosty Tip in Dykesville and cruise for Illinois Babes in Fish Creek. It's the late 60s, and Herky and Mabel, well, they're the proprietors of the Frosty Tip. Join us Friday, February 2nd through Saturday, February 24th. For tickets, go to TicketStarOnline.com or go to MeyerTeeter.org or call 920-494-3401. If you're Belgian or not, you need to see this show. Hello, the name is Frank Furter Pankratz, or as mom and dad call me, number two and a half. You see, Herky and Mabel, mom and dad, are Catholic and they had nine boys. And we have so many names, they just call us by our number. I'm number two and a half because I have a twin. You see, ten and a half months before me, my twin was born, and then I was born... So they call me two and a half. Well, because of my unusually large size. We, the Pankratz boys, run the frosty tip while mom and dad are working at the mill. And by doing that, we meet, yeah, we meet some Illinois babes. Some fibs, as you call them. And we go cruising for them up in Fish Creek. And let's just say I fall heads over tails for the redhead. Come see the hilarity of two and a half Belgians at the Meyer Theater, February 2nd to February 24th. For tickets, go to MeyerTheater.org or call Ticketstar at 920-494-3401. And don't forget, say hi to Herky and Mabel. Am I done? Elevate your program's fundraising this season with Vertical Raise. Vertical Raise is the premier online fundraising platform for organizations of all sizes using innovative technology to create the easiest and most efficient system available. Raise more money in less time with a local fundraising coach who works with you every step of the way to customize the ideal fundraiser for your program. To find out more, visit verticalraise.com. And welcome back to Torchy Clark Gymnasium as the Hawks of Xavier close out a very impressive regular season. They go 22-2 and and they go undefeated 14-0 and in the Bay Conference the third time in the last 13 years that they have done that. Let's take a look at some leading scorers first for Shano. They were led by Logan Sippel, their leading scorer, he averages 20. He finishes with 14. Warner Beyer with 10. Actually, Anderson Schmidt had a higher number, 11. Beyer with 10. Crew Weisnick with nine. Three points tonight from Eli Passale. Two points from Jersey Brocker this evening and Parker Beyer. And one free throw Late in this ball game by Jacob Rogers for their total of 52. Only five free throws for Shano. They made three of them. They did have 13 turnovers at the halftime break. And taking a peek, they had 18 in the ball game. Hawks shot at 21 of 43. Only seven of 23 from beyond the three-point arc. And they got out-rebounded 43 to 19 so a rough night for the Shano Hawks as they will fall to 8 and 16 overall 5 and 9 in the Bay Conference and for the Bay Conference champs the Xavier Hawks amazing balance again it was Tyler Brightman their leading scorer 16 this evening and Isaiah Disjardins what a first half scored 13 of his 15 in that first half, gave the Hawks unbelievable energy tonight. Luke Olhafen with a dozen, 11 from Reed Hippus in the game, and nine each from Sam Pfefferly and Hayden Quimby, seven from 
Michael Kippenhan, his first career start. We're going to talk with him here in just a little bit. And it was Logan Ramchek and Cole Hippis with five each and two from Luke Kroll as the Hawks shot it just a hair under 50%, 34 of 70 from the field. They were 11 of 28 from the three-point line. And free throws, very solid evening. 12 of 15, Xavier was as a team. So shooting the free throws well, and that's something that we talk about all the time. And going into the postseason, that is going to be huge. Xavier comes away with 12 steals this evening as well. So very active hands. They got to some full court pressure, some trapping defense tonight. And uh, that was really the turning point of this game early on, especially when they went to that full court trapping defense. It caused Shano a ton of issues in this basketball game. And now we're going to welcome in uh, Michael Kippen on here as he's making his way up the bleachers. There you go. Throw those on. And I think we're on the air. Sounds good. All right. Let's get that mic right here. Talk nice and loud. You're on camera. Hello. You can wave. Well. What a senior night this turns out to be. Seven of you guys this evening. And you get your first career start. And uh, I don't know if I've seen a basketball player smile as much as you did tonight because it was a lot of fun. You finished with a career high seven. Uh, just talk about how special this night was for you and your, and your teammates. Uh, yeah, it was just really cool to, uh, you know, always just be a part of this team in the first part. But... Uh, it's really cool that uh, Connor gave me the opportunity to get the start. There were seven other guys, or six other guys. and Look at this. <laughs> well, I'm diabetic, so that goes to you. Um, we got some cake going on We got on six other guys. Anyway. And yes. <laughs> we got six other guys, and Connor uh, gave me the chance, and that was I felt really uh, appreciative of that. Um, it's just cool to go out and play. I mean, I don't get much playing time, and... Just got to know your role, and, yeah, it's fun. I just love love what I do. I love being on the bench, love being a part of the team, but when I get my time, I, uh, I guess I had to shine. Well, that leads me to my next question. You just said it. You don't get to play a lot, so let's talk about the role on the team because a lot of people, they look at the starters and maybe the first few guys off the bench, and they think the guy at the end of the bench doesn't offer a lot of value, but in essence, let's talk about practice. Scout team for one, right? What is your role and how important is your role? I think people overlook sometimes the last couple of guys on the bench. Yeah, so uh, Clarner, like last year, he gave me the uh, talk of offering me a spot on the team, and he said, uh, um, said like, you're not going to get much minutes, but I want you to be a leader, and I want you to be going hard every day in practice. Um, and I, I went home, talked to it with my parents, and I uh, took the role, took the opportunity, and I was very grateful for that. Um, yeah, but practice-wise, I mean, it's just, it's not about me, it's about the other guys. I'm trying to make them better. I'm trying to, because they're the ones that are going to get us into the state championship, hopefully, and that's our goal, and they're the ones that are ultimately going to do that, but I got to get them better and get them prepared for what we need to do. I love the answer because you, you've mentioned the word opportunity now I don't know how many times, and you mentioned Coach Klarner at least three times. I think this is a situation where you're going to look back on this later in life and say you know what I'm happy I went out for that team even though I knew I wasn't maybe the most talented kid on the team you offer value to the team and everybody they call it a team for a reason right there's no I in team as you kind of just mentioned but I got to ask you about this I always find it fun and exciting to me when I see bench players get in late in the game and I don't care what the score is that's really doesn't really doesn't matter a whole lot but I love watching the students get behind a guy like you. When you touch that basketball, what's that feeling like when you get out there? You don't get a lot of shots up as we've talked, but what kind of energy, what kind of thrill is that to have your student section behind you, whether it's in garbage time, whatever? Uh, I talk about that feeling a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's, like, it's, it's a lot for me because um, I don't really like that pressure, but even like when we're in like away games and I get in and there's not much time left, I still uh, 
I'll chuck up a three and then usually uh goes a little far because I still get a little anxious even without the student section but it's hard you know you sit down for an hour and 20 minutes and then you go in and you haven't shot a ball and but like today <laughs> I you know I got in the first half played a lot of minutes and then got in the rhythm in the second half and found my shot yeah and it did indeed you had that right corner three over here that was a, a pretty good looking shot but I'm gonna leave you with this and uh, I think this might be the most important question I can possibly ask you because no matter how much basketball you play or don't play, all of these basketball careers are going to end here in a few years and in a few games potentially if you don't go on and play in college. So the important question is, what do you want to be when you grow up? Where are you going to go to college? What do you want to study? So um, I'm committed to Marquette. Um, That's a good start. I don't really know what for. I'm in the business school, but... I might transfer into the engineering school and follow a path of like construction or civil engineering. Whoa. Um, Love it. Or I might go into athletic training at Marquette. My brother did that and he seems to really love his job and I really like what he's doing and it's a nice opportunity there. But business school, I guess that could lead me somewhere too. I don't really know. Wow. Well, you got a bright future, young man. No kinda, question I, about I, it. I kind of hold it off until it's really, really at the moment and yeah. Yeah, outstanding boy, just a, a gracious uh, young man right here, Michael Kippenon joining us, and I uh, really appreciate your time. Good luck in the postseason. We'll see you a week from tomorrow night. It'll be two rivers or no Holstein coming into a very difficult place to play, Torchy Clark. That's awesome here. Yeah, I love it. Thank you. you. Bet. Michael Kippenon joining us on the postgame show, and uh, one of seven seniors tonight being honored here at Torchy Clark Gym. So a pleasure having him come up and chatting just a little bit uh, with one of the seven seniors, got his first career start this evening. He finishes with seven points, two of six from the field, and uh, just a great effort. Five rebounds as well for Michael Kippenhan tonight, and 20 minutes out of the senior this evening, and uh, what a gracious young man. He talked quite a bit how happy he was to be part of the ball club this year and get the opportunity to be on a very good basketball team. So that is going to do it. I want to thank everybody for checking in tonight on the Sports Faith YouTube channel. And we'll be back here, of course, a week from tomorrow night for the start of regional action for the Xavier Hawks. They'll take on the winner of Two Rivers and New Holstein. So your final score, once again, from Torchy Clark Gym, Xavier 91 Shano 52. So we'll talk to you next a week from tomorrow night. Regionals begin on Tuesday evening. Of course, Xavier with the first round by. Brilliant as well. The three seed with a first round by as well. Both those teams win in advance. We will have a rematch of the sectional final from a year ago. Could be Xavier Brilliant. And that game would be right here at Torchy Clark Gym. So that'll do it. We'll talk to you a week from Friday night. Thanks again for watching. You've been watching Xavier Basketball right here on Sports Faith YouTube.